Guys, welcome back to the channel. Guns, Ammo, and Drones here. Today, we are going to be talking about the Remington RP9. So really, let's just dive right in. You know, when I, when I ordered this gun, I, of course, had watched videos on YouTube here. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, most of the videos were negative. I am having a hard time remembering anything about any of the other videos that I've watched that there was a lot of really positive things uh, about this gun. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't out there. You guys probably have found them. I probably didn't watch all of them. <clears throat> so when I bought it, I bought the gun, you know, I ordered it. I've never held one before, so I didn't really know what to expect. Looks-wise, on the videos, you know, the gun, it looks okay. Um, it's it's kind of lackluster to a point. Now, it's not Glockish in my opinion. Glocks have been around for 40 years, so everybody knows what a Glock looks like, and, and they're about as plain, and some people would arguably say that they're one of the ugliest guns, which I wholeheartedly disagree. But looking at this one here, it's, it's very plain. It does have a really high slide here. But surprisingly, this gun's really not, not that much, actually, I won't say it's not much different. It's exactly the same dimensions as the Canik TP9SF. So I can't really say anything about it being too big of a gun, although it, it looks and feels bigger than what it actually is in your hand. So when I got to my FFL and it came just like this inside this green cardboard box, okay? So I opened it up and I wasn't starstruck in a sense, you know? I, I will usually look or get a gun and I'll be like, I'll open up the box and, and I'd think to myself, holy crap, that is just a beautiful gun or man, look at this thing, this is excellent. So when I got it and I started picking it up, I started holding it and I'm thinking, it's kind of lackluster. It really is. It's a big gun. And that's really what I thought. So I started holding it and, and, you know, bringing it home and playing with it and, and checking out the action and the trigger. And so I've had some time now to look over this gun, to hold it and feel it. Now I haven't had a chance to shoot it yet because of this whole COVID thing and the protesting and whatnot. Now, we haven't had so much an issue with that down here in, in Florida, unlike Miami. I am a couple hours north of Miami. Um, so we haven't had to worry about it too much here, but I haven't been able to, to shoot this gun. So this is purely a, a review, what I thought right out of the box, and has my mind changed on this pistol. So let me start by saying, I did say it was lackluster. I was not impressed with this gun. One of the first things I said to my FFL, man, I probably wasted some of this money. I'm probably going to trade it in on something or maybe I won't even shoot it. But you know what? That's not fair. And and I'm kind of glad that I didn't trade it in right off the bat. Overall, the gun is not that bad. I initially thought that it was worse than what it was. So let's talk about some of the features here. It does come with two uh, two magazines. Now these are 18 round mags, so that's really nice. It's, it's as good as it gets for the most part. The um, now the the magazines themselves. Let's talk about these for a second. They're just regular steel mags. I don't know who makes them. Probably Remington. I I would imagine. Okay, so they're they're nice 18 round mags. Now I'm gonna just since I have the mag out, I'm gonna talk about it. This one, this particular pistol is having an issue. Like, if you look at it, and I'll try to try to show you here, it does not go in any farther. You see how there's there's no room, okay? It doesn't lock in, all right? Now, it will go. I have to, I have to slam it. Oh, it even came out then. So, I gotta slam it a little harder. Okay, it's locked in. I hate that. It's actually the only pistol that I own that has that kind of problem where normally you would you would just put it in and it okay it held that time. It's a it's a hit or miss thing and to be honest with you 95% of the time it does not want to lock in. 
okay? Like you would normally put a mag in. I'm not one for, for hitting them. That's just me. I, I don't care for that. I don't feel that you should have to do that. And I know it's popular to do that on TV. You know, you get you get it up in there and then bam, you, you slam it home. I don't do that with my pistols. I don't want to take a chance on ruining anything. So what I've kind of figured out, and I'm, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to notch out the bottom of this magazine a little bit where that where that uh, magazine release is. I probably won't do it to both sides. I'll just do it to the one since I am right-handed. So I hate that. I, I think that's ridiculous that it left the factory being able to do that. Okay. The stippling, the texturing is pretty interesting. You can see here that it's just kind of your, your standard standard stippling, but it does go all the way around the trigger guard and it goes all the way around the back. Now these are pretty aggressive. They're just blades. I mean, they cut these deep channels out of them and I think that'll show up a little bit. It is a removable back strap. It does come with, I don't have them out here, but uh, it does come with two more. The gun's pretty comfortable to hold in your hand. It's, it's a pretty comfortable gun, but it's a big gun. It, or it feels bigger than, than, than what it is. Did a mag come out? Okay, let's go ahead and take it out. So it does come with two mags. The magazine release is a nice big teardrop shaped steel magazine. It is reversible. You've got your slide stop, okay, which is just your normal size and it is ambidextrous. I haven't even tried. Yeah, it drops when the magazine's out. You put a magazine in, you probably aren't gonna drop it with that thumb. The takedown lever is pretty decent size like it is on standard pistols. Now this one actually pulls down real easy. You don't have to turn and get a really good Get a good grip on it. It, uh, it, it actually pulls down really easy. I, I do like that. Your front rail, okay. And you pull the trigger and it comes right apart. And look how huge this thing is. I, this thing, even, even just looking at it and not even on camera while I'm looking at it here. I mean, this thing is just, it's huge. It's well over an inch. I didn't put my uh, calipers on it. So I don't know exactly what it is, but it's really big. And as you can see here, it has a steel recoil spring and a flat captured spring. And then you've got your barrel. You know, and surprisingly for this thing not uh, firing it, it certainly has a lot of barrel chatter on it. And I see a lot of guns come brand new looking like that already. And uh, yeah, I don't really know what to think about that, but it's not that big of a deal. But the barrel's really nice. The the finish and, and the just the, the material inside is finished really well. There's no mill mill issues. Alright. It's pretty nice. Yeah, let's put it back together. Puts back together just the same way as you would anything else. Alright, lock it back. Put that up. Send it home. Steel sights, which is nice. I'm sure you, if you don't like these nice three dot, then you could probably change them out at some point. It's got a fairly high bore axis. It's probably very similar to the SIG 320 M17. I'm going to guess it's probably somewhere along those lines. Now this is a chassis system, as you can see. Uh, the serialized portion is actually the, the inside and basically you pull, actually, you don't even have to pull this pin out, surprisingly. Um, I'll go ahead and show you, because that's kind of interesting. Usually, this is the pin that you would take out to to uh, get rid of it. But as you can see, there's a pin right here that holds this in. So this is actually connected to this. And this actually is what holds down your your slide stop spring right there. And, uh, and then it just comes out. I haven't taken it out yet, and um, I didn't really feel like messing with it. I uh, probably will at some point just to give it a really good thorough cleaning. But it is removable in case something happens to your frame. I can't imagine that Remington will make any other frames for this. There's really no need to. I'll be honest with you. 
It's a sub $300 gun, and there are so many more better options out on the market than, than this one. I think this needs a little bit of work. I do want to talk about the trigger for a second here. As you can see, it does have the drop safety right here, as most striker fired pistols do. Trigger pull is actually really nice. It's about three and a half pounds. I've gotten readings from three and a half to four, but most of my readings came out at about three and a half, which I think is really nice. And it has a really weird trigger. It's, it's a feel. It's not, so, it's not so much a sound that it makes. It's not the sound, but it's the feel. Once you pull the trigger, the best thing that I can explain is that it feels like there's a spring inside that is just vibrating just for a split second after the trigger's pulled. It's very similar, in my opinion, to the Beretta APX. If you've, if you've dry fired or sh uh, shot a Beretta APX, especially dry fire, because then you can hear it and feel it. It has that kind of springy feel after. All right, so it's got a nice trigger. As far as the reset, right there. It's kind of a long reset. It is audible, and you can certainly feel it. It's a long one, but you know what? I'm not really concerned with trigger resets. Um, it's gonna go. It's gonna shoot when you when you pull the trigger. So I this is one of those guns you're probably gonna not gonna use in some kind of competition or anything like that. So the stylings on it are pretty interesting. You got the big R, uh, the big R there, Huntsville, Alabama. I lived in Huntsville for about a year in the in 2000, and uh, they had a nice army base down there, Redstone Armory, and and there was a couple other places in there, but I don't remember Remington being there. And um, they might not have been at that time. But if they were, I had no idea. I might have tried to visit the factory if, uh, if they were. So, guys, overall, I, when I was watching all these videos and some of you guys said, oh, this is a piece of junk, it needs work, most of the videos were at least a year, two, or three years old. And I would have assumed that Remington probably has done some reworking with the gun and listened to you guys out there talking about the things that are wrong with the pistol, what needs to be changed. I would definitely work on these magazines because they need to be cut a little bit different. Now that's that one. Let me see. I don't, I don't recall if the other one did that or not. Yep. It does the same thing. All right. It locked that time. Let me hit it. Let me just see if it has positive eject. A little bit. When these things are full, you're not going to get that. But when the magazine is in, they kind of just slide out. So, overall, guys, um, if I was going to tell you anything about this pistol before you bought it, I would probably tell you to pass on it unless you're just a, a Remington fan and you want to have it in your collection. I like their rifles, but I'm not a big fan of their pistols. Again, that's just my opinion. You guys might hold this and think, oh man, that feels fantastic. Cause I mean, it does feel good. But as far as the pistol, it's just, it's just a run of the mill, striker fired, full size pistol. And in my opinion, there are other brands out there that probably would suit you a little bit better, that you would like a little bit better something to carry, uh, you might want to, you might want to look into that. But like I said, if you just really like Remington and you want to try this out, certainly by all means, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it feels nice. It's just that I don't think it's anything that I would probably recommend, at least right now, if they came out with like some new styling or maybe made the slide a little bit, a little bit, uh, uh thinner, at the top, it might put this in the contention with some of the other pistols that um, that are out there on the market. And that, you know, to be honest with you, that's the good thing about all these pistols. Everybody and their brother is making guns these days. So the market is flooded 
with striker fired and hammer fired pistols and polymer. So you really have your choice. And I guess the purpose of this video is to just kind of let you know from, from somebody who just enjoys guns and what you can kind of expect, I would imagine for, for the most part, I'm not saying that you're gonna be like me, but there are a lot of other guns out there that you probably would like a little bit better. Guys, I'm gonna shut the video off and um, I, hope, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe brought a little bit of, little bit of light to what somebody thinks of this gun when you first open up the box. Um, and, um, but try for yourself if you, if you like it. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate it. We'll see you next time.